All right, this is part two of the tool setup with the OTS probe system on our TM1B. And I did a manual setup on this here. Now, if I go to my MDI program screen, tool setting, we got small tools, half inch or smaller, big tools. Now, the reason why you can't use small tools in that because this is going to, and I'll demonstrate, it's going to try to be on center which means the center of this, which would not work. We're going to have a crash situation. Also, you also want to make sure if you're doing, using any automatic cycles that you have, you have a tool in the spindle because the machine won't know that you don't. Okay, so manual also for like big, big end mills or a slotting mill or something like that. So it has to be on its side. Okay, now I'm going to go to the alternate one for our big tool is the rotating one. We find actually this is a little bit more accurate because these face mills, the inserts may not be within one thousandth of each other. So if you do the rotating one, it's going to pick the lowest one. So in this one, this is automatic length rotating. Hit enter, and we have to measure this number right here, approximate tool length, and approximate diameter. So tool number is one. And we're going to get our tape measure out or our scale. We actually keep a scale here that's it's got decimal on it right here. Decimals. If you're not good with converting fractions to decimals. And notice it's to the flange. So what I use, I use my finger to help me with this. I'm going to put it down with the flanges and use my finger to feel where the insert is. And I'll use my thumb as a mark. So I'm, I'm getting 2.8 right there, 2.8. Alright, so my approximate length is going to be 2.8. Now, oops, I went too fast there. Let me go back and do it again. I hit the button twice. Back in, tool number one, 2.8 on length and diameter. So t this is really a, as a three inch cutter, but that's three inches to the outside here. And we have the octagon inserts, which make it slightly smaller than two, three inches. So we've actually wrote a note here. Tool one is 2.8 for diameter. So we use 2.8. Because what it will try to do is try to hit the edge of this, not the bottom of that. It will give you a bad number of depth. Okay. I'm going to finish the programming with output to MDI. Review automatic length rotating. And I'm going to do MDI and then I'm going to do cycle start. But this is automatic, which means it's going to do everything. If it doesn't have the tool on the spindle, it will get the tool. If it's not in the right position, it'll put it in the right position. It's going to go rotate in reverse, the non-cutting direction, so it needs to rotate before it touches that trigger. So now we're in MDI, and now we'll continue on with cycle start. So it goes up, relocates, and comes down. And if you're not sure, you can hit feet hold at any time and review your setup. All looks good. Continue on. I want to make sure it rotates before it touches. So I got my finger on the feed hold button. All right. Now it's good. If you do not set that approximate length number, it may run into that before it starts rotating. Like if you put in 2.08. So right now it's still moving, and now it touched the trigger and it just sped up a little bit. Now it's going to do a double check. And that's done. It's just going to go home. That's the end of the cycle. So that's the more accurate way of doing this dimension here. Now we're going to do the other tools. And that's a half inch end mill, 3 h chamfer mill, 0.228 drill, and a quarter dash 20 form tap. Okay. Tools are all loaded per setup sheet. So now we can go to MDI program again and go down to tool setting. And we're going to use auto length only. 
auto link is automatic, so it'll do everything. Hit enter. Link only that could touch OTS disk. Okay, tool number is two. I'm gonna hit enter and finish the programming with output the MDI. And from right here, we can go MDI cycle start, and it'll do the rest of it automatically. Switch tools, it'll relocate on center if it wasn't already. And it's gonna come down and touch the touch trigger probe. And double check and go home. And that's it. So that's set tool number two. So now we have two offsets from tool length, the H number. We can automate this a little bit if we look at this setting, we go MDI program again, go into tool setting and hit enter. And notice these tools look just like this one. So this is automatic length and diameter, so I would only use this if you're doing manual programming. We don't really need the diameter. We can manually enter diameter numbers. This one says auto length sequential tools. I think we can use this one. I'm going to hit enter. And this will do multiple tools. So actually I have three, four, and five to do. So I can do three, enter for first tool, and five, enter for last tool. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'll put the MDI, and now MDI cycle start. Now we can automate and do more than one. And I noticed we also have a tool six, but we use that on an engraving cycle, so that's not part of this job. So but first time around, you know, I would always be near the machine with the feed hole button, just in case. And you want to observe the whole cycle. But as you learn in these automated cycles, you can start to trust them. But if I had typed in tool 3 through 7, there is no tool in tool 7. And this machine, we've attempted it and it won't stop. It'll go down with the empty tool holder and it won't touch the trigger probe and it'll probably crash into that. So that's why you still want to be around this long, even in automated mode. So, so this is going to set all our tool lengths. And I was reviewing before the offset. Now this starts to add in more numbers. And that will update any second. There we go. So it's running these sub programs underneath here. That's all done. So it's memory reset, and now it's we've covered the setup page. We've done vice fixture stock, work offsets, tool offsets. Now we're ready to do prove out. On prove out, we got we need a program, load program in memory. We're going to run the Haas graphics simulation. Then we're going to set the rapid override at 25%, turn optional stop on. So we'll cover that in the next video. Thanks.